Good afternoon and welcome to Take Action News. This is Daniel Marins and for David Schuster right now in the host chair. I want to welcome all of our listeners and viewers in Chicago and Chicago's Progressive Talk in Grand Rapids, Michigan, parts of Oklahoma, and across the country watching us live right now on TakeActionNews.com or listening live on WeActRadio.com. And of course, you can catch our clips on YouTube at YouTube.com slash TakeActionNewsTV. Later in the week, we encourage you to subscribe. You can get free clips in your inbox. You can also get our podcast on the Stitcher app on your iPhone or your mobile device. We've got a great show ahead this hour. We're going to be talking about the greatest hits of CPAC, whether it's an opportunity for progress or just another case of conservative movement stagnation. Then we're going to have a very exciting contentious debate at around at the uh, half hour mark between Dr. Maya Rocky Moore, who's an expert in social insurance programs and issues related to, to poverty, low income, people of color public health issues. She's going to be debating the New York City large soda ban that was recently overturned with Catherine Mangu Ward, the managing editor of Reason Magazine, a libertarian magazine. Fascinating stuff. That's going to be really exciting. Stick around for that. And then finally, we're going to round off the hour with my Rocky Moore sticking around to defend herself against a vicious attack made against her by Stephen Perlstein in the Washington Post. But first, too big to fail. Too big to fail. That's what we hear about the largest banks in our economy. And certainly the stats are staggering. In the, these, are, these are figures that, that, will, that will shock people. The, the, uh, the four largest banks now range from $1.4 trillion to $2.3 trillion in assets. They're the result of 37 banks merging 33 times. 1995, the six biggest United States banks had assets equal to 18% of the economy, and today they make up 63% of the economy. That's a figure from Senator Sherrod Brown of Ohio, who is, introdu- who is working on, apparently, a bill to end too big to fail, a bill, a bill to wind down the size of these banks so, they don't get a f- that they, so that there is no such thing as too big to fail. There's no such thing as a situation in which the federal government would have to bail out these banks because the damage that it would cause if they took on two risks so big that they collapsed would be so great to the economy that the government would simply have to bail them out. How would you do things like that? Well, you could do things like capping the amount of assets that a bank can have, force them to spin off parts of their operations. You could also require them to have higher capital to debt ratios. Now, it's fascinating because Senator Sherrod Brown is now joining forces with Senator David Vitter. Yes, that's the man who's made famous or infamous for basically admitting to sleeping with prostitutes and then getting reelected in the family value state of Louisiana. But that's a case of right and left joining on this issue because very few Americans like the idea that we're giving banks the moral hazard to take risks in which the profits are privatized and the losses are socialized. Now, you could argue that we made a profit on on the bailouts of the banks, and and to some extent that is true. But what about the entire economic meltdown that occurred because these banks took on risks that were too big? Because these banks were not not properly underwriting their their mortgages and they were repackaging them in ways that endangered the entire economy. That happened because the banks had an implicit subsidy from the federal government. 